Now, a carnivorous plant, you may wonder, what is that? It's a plant that depends on the nutrients that come from the insects or maybe small mammals that it actually eats. And you may wonder, how does a plant eat an insect or a fly? Have you heard of the Venus flytrap? Come a little closer, I want to show you something. This is a small little Venus flytrap. If you'll notice, they have almost like an open book shape. They're, they're traps with little hairs and sensors on the rim. Now what happens, when a fly lands here and provokes some of these little sensors, it actually has to hit, I think, touch upon two of them. The plant knows this. It waits a second, and when it enters inside the cavity, it closes in on it, and it captures it. The more that the fly tries to get out, the more tight it, it gets because what happens is there's water that's released from the cells of the wall of this plant and all that pressure just come crushing down. So what happens? The plant digests it and it takes it in, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and that is how it gets its nutrients. Now there are others like this, look at this. They call this the monkey cup. And these are absolutely gorgeous. Look at how they hang. I want you to notice something, guys. Here's the leaf, right? And it's a tendril that actually grows into one of these monkey cups. I want to show you one that's just starting out. Look at this. This little leaf and then the monkey cup. Okay, so what happens by design is it exudes a scent that is irresistible to insects, flies, small mammals. And as they climb and walk around here, they sip on the nectar. And as they get a little bit closer, and lean in, what happens is they actually just fall down this funnel and at the bottom is liquid. Let me pour some. And this liquid drowns and not only drowns the insects, but it also breaks them down. There's enzymes, all kinds of acids. So absolutely fascinating. Look at this. This is gorgeous. These are pitcher plants and they're called pitcher plants because it looks like a pitcher. Take a look. You see, here's the cover. All right, but there's a genius design, design behind this. Now, this drips a delicious nectar that the insects come for. And then as they get closer to the rim here, this is all waxy and very slippery. But not only is it waxy and slippery, as they start to descend, if they try to crawl back up, it's impossible. The reason is there are tons of tiny little hairs that are facing downward. It's almost like when you go into a parking lot and you can't back up because there's those, you know, those tines. That's exactly how this is designed. And once it lands down here, it's bye-bye. Again, carnivorous plants, they're not being mean. They're not trying to be scary. This is how they survive. In nature, they grow in bogs, in swampy lands. And so it's so wet that a lot of the nutrients are leached from the soil. So they depend on their insects and their prey to, so that they can live. One of the ways that you can grow some of these beautiful carnivorous plants is home. If you can give them a place outdoors, under shade, especially if you live in a hot, dry climate like we do in LA, then you will be fine. If you live in a humid area, then you're in luck because that is where they thrive. But they do best in containers. I like to put the original plant container that the plants come in. Here's a pitcher plant. And I just put and set out a few different ones. Here's a sundew. Here's a Venus flytrap. And I just put them together in an aquarium because the aquarium gives them the humidity that they need. It just holds that humidity in there. So it's a great way to dissuade. So you have this outdoors from spring until it's really cold. And at that time, you bring it indoors and you let it go dormant. When you plant it, do not use regular soil. Peat moss mixed with a little perlite and a little orchid bark all mixed together, give it the right living conditions. Keep it nice and wet, enjoy them, and show off your carnivorous plants to friends.